In our previous video, we put together a toy data set consisting of my friend's experiences with their dental fillings. Our data contained two columns. The first told us how long each person's fillings lasted, and the second told us what happened to it in the end, whether it fell out on its own or if it was removed for some other reason, or maybe they're still there. At any rate, some fillings fell out sooner and some fell out later. And the next thing to think about is why. So I asked my friends what their fillings were made of to find out if the material had any effect on the fillings lifespan. Now let's add another column to the table we already have that will mark the material. So Anthony said he got a composite filling and so did Bert, but Chloe got a ceramic one and David again got a composite one and we'll fill this in for everyone on the list. Now it makes sense to have more samples for our analysis. So I've prepared a larger data set, including additional data I gathered from 10 work colleagues, and I've added the data to the data set's widget. So it's available for anyone working in Orange. Let's load this updated data set to Orange using the data set's widget. You can find it by typing dental fillings into the search bar and double click. We can now inspect our data in the data table widget and see it looks good. Orange automatically recognizes that the type of material is a categorical feature with two values, composite and ceramic. Now let's pass this data through the as survival widget to mark the features that record time and event. Everything is now in order to inspect the data in the Kaplan-Meier plot. This time, we can draw two survival curves on the plot, each one corresponding to the filling type, and we'll set the grouping feature accordingly. Interesting, it seems that ceramic dental fillings have a better chance of staying in place than composite ones. And come to think of it, 10 years ago, I got a ceramic filling precisely because it was said to last longer, and I paid a bit more for it. So our results make sense. When we add a categorical feature, such as the type of material, it's easy to form groups from our data. In our case, one group were the friends with ceramic fillings, and the other group were the friends with composite fillings. But not all features are categorical. For instance, what about the average amount of time someone spends brushing their teeth each day? And as you might have guessed, I've asked my friends and colleagues just that. And this data is also available in the same data set under the column brushing time. So let's inspect this column in the data table to see how it holds up. Turns out Anthony uses an electric toothbrush, so he's timed his brushing time to four minutes a day. Bert says he takes a bit longer, and Chloe, who has braces, spends 15 minutes each day brushing her teeth. Now, brushing time is a numeric feature. This means its values are continuous, and we have to define a threshold value to form groups. So let's try forming two groups, one for the people that brush their teeth more than six minutes a day, and the other for the people that brush less than six. Now, we'll use the select rows widget to define this variable and threshold. Normally, when you use the select rows, it outputs just the data that matches any given condition. But in this case, we wanted to send out all the data and just send an indicator of where the condition is met. Now, when we connect this select rows to Kaplan-Meier, I'm gonna have to rewire the connection to indicate that select rows is sending out all the data and not just a subset. Now let's open the Kaplan-Meier plot. Under groups, we choose selected, and there you go. We plotted two curves, one for the people that spend over six minutes brushing their teeth, indicated with yes, and one for those that spend less time than that, indicated with no. And comparing this plot to the previous one, using the type of material to form the two groups, grouping my friends by material type seemed to make more of a difference in the survival curve. And we can gather this just by visually inspecting the data. Of course, it doesn't make sense to use just any feature to form groups. 
Not all features affect survival, so not all of them will separate the data into groups with different survival curves. For example, one can assume that whether a person prefers dogs or cats won't affect how long their dental fillings last. But just to be sure, I've added another column to our dataset denoting whether the person is a dog person or a cat person. And apparently, Anthony is a dog person, while Bert and Chloe prefer cats. So let's open the Kaplan-Meier widget and group by this feature. We can see that the survival curves are barely separated. Preferring dogs to cats won't affect the survival of your dental fillings. Now you might be wondering if there is a more systematic way of comparing how well a particular feature separates survival curves. And it turns out that there is. It's called the log rank test. It computes how likely the difference between survival curves is not random. The smaller the p-value, the more likely our feature actually separates the data into groups with different outcomes. And we can see this value next to the Kaplan-Meier plot in orange. We find that grouping by type of material gives us a smaller p-value, and grouping by cat versus dog preference gives a p-value of almost 1. In this video, we learned that we could group our data instances, or as I like to call them, my friends, using either a categorical or a continuous feature. In the latter case, we need to define a threshold to form the groups. And we can then compare the survival curves of these groups, which gives us some idea of whether or not the feature in question affects survival. We can then inspect this visually on a Kaplan-Meier plot and calculate the log rank test which quantifies the difference. In the following video, we'll leave my friends behind and apply these methods and new ones to a larger publicly available survival dataset.